Well, everybody, welcome to another edition of Demonology Today with Grizzly and Dennis Carroll. Welcome back. Good. Hello, Chad. How you doing, Dennis? All right. How's it going, my friend? Doing fine. Raven Cree. Hello, Tess. Well, Hello, Tammy. This is uh, an auspicious night tonight uh, that we're broadcasting on. This is Walpurgis Night. Uh, yeah. it always, it always occurs the last day of April, right just before May Day. This is supposed to be one of the most evil nights of the year. The that is correct. When, uh, yeah, the night when witches slap on that, uh, special stuff that makes them fly on their broomsticks and they all fly off to the Brocken and the Alps to meet with their doll, uh, their boss, Satan, uh, so it's, uh, it's a very interesting night. I had a very uh, strange experience happen to me one while Fergus night. I was actually filming in a graveyard uh, really? in a cemetery. Yeah, and it was, I was actually filming through a fence because you can't, you know, it's a, in many states it's against the law to be in a cemetery after dark, you know. And this was, it was night, it was dark. And I was filming through the fence of the cemetery and something actually walked in front of my camera, I mean, very close up to it, and I look up immediately, look, what is that? And there's nothing there, you know. It was very strange. But it would happen when you when your camera, or your video thing was not going, you know. <laughs> That's the way it always happened. Right. You know, I, I wasn't right. actually filming. I was looking through the viewfinder, but I wasn't filming. That's the way it goes. Well, hello, Tim, Chris, Chad, Crazy Witch, David Lester. Welcome to the show, Raven Creek. Hello, everybody. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah, what a uh, show that is outlined. Uh, if you was in the last show, I gave you a little teaser. Uh, it is one heck of a show. Uh, I can tell you, be prepared. I can tell you that. Tim from Florida. Hey, hey. So, Dennis. We have talked about this. Uh -huh. So where are we going to go tonight? Well, we're going into some other very dark areas, uh, Chris. Uh, we're actually going to explore. This is going to be kind of a two-part thing. It's going to go over into next week. Nothing happens. We meet again. But this is part one of it. And this part one is concerned with the cryptid demonic connection. Now, we're going to get a lot of probably flack off of this from a lot of the cryptid community. Hey, um, there, there is a, a, a definite connection with some of this stuff. And we need to try to explore some of their origins, why are they the way that they are, and to find exactly what true cryptids are uh, and what, what might be their possible demonic connection. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Well, I've always wondered about that. And in the last show, uh, speaking of that, uh, I actually brought up, you know, what is the purpose of Sasquatch, Bigfoot, Footery, however you want to put it? Why are they here? What is their purpose? So uh, where do they come from? You know, nobody knows that answer. So and cryptids, Dogman, the Rake. You know, we have many theories. Nobody's an expert. So, yeah, let it rip. I'm ready. Uh, do I need to get my prayer cloth? Because I, I do have one. Do I need to wear it? Yeah, but you might yeah. better, You might want to. might better do it, yeah. Right. Uh, I've got my uh, Star of Solomon seal of the seven archangels on tonight, just in case. It doesn't help. It doesn't hurt to be prepared. Uh, my prayer cloth has just like vanished. Uh, yeah, it, was just uh -oh. like just, it was just like sitting right here. I never move it. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if it's my dolls. Uh, that That is wild. Well, there used to be an old saying. There used to be an old saying in the South, if it wasn't the maid, it might be supernatural. <laughs> so like, if, you're, uh, if, you're, if, if your maid didn't move it, you know, where did he go? That's, that's like very strange. I've never had that disappear. It's yeah. always in the same spot. Uh, okay, go ahead. Anyway, um, 
the uh, the origins of some of these cryptids. Now, not all of them. We can't pr we can't paint all of the cryptids with a uh, uh, with a broad brush. But there are some specific right. ones we're going we're going to deal with tonight. Did you find it? Yes, I did find it. Right. Uh, okay, now good, I'm losing good. my video. So this is interesting. Uh, I lost the camera. So let me see if I can bring that back up. There we go. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, I did find my prayer cloth. All right, good, good. There you go. All right. All right. Uh, uh, We're going to do maybe the one side tonight. You never know. Some might not want you to find it. That's the way it goes sometimes. <laughs> uh, it was actually hidden. Uh, hidden. Uh, so everybody, uh, it's not, uh, so the prayer cloth, it, it's not, uh, it, that's the initials of Jesus Christ uh, in Greek, uh, if you want to know what that means. So, and, yes. and, his, and his service. Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, the uh, the cryptid, yeah. Uh, we got to define the cryptid, okay, right quick. Let me get, it, I'll get, get that out of the way. A cryptid is an unknown creature or animal. Uh, we have some examples of that that have recently been found recently, I think, so some frog, uh, some different type of animals. They're always discovering an unknown. There you go. But, yeah, he's ready. That man, that man is I definitely ready. I am prepared ready. tonight, yes. All right. I am prepared. So, uh, yeah, we, you know, your cryptids are mainly just unknown animal. Cryptid actually uh, is, is the, defines the animal. Cryptozoology is the field. Uh, and cryptozoology is concerned with unknown, finding unknown animals or discovering unknown animals. Or even part of it would be rediscovering animals that supposedly have gone extinct, like the thousand tiger and stuff like that. Uh, but now there is a section of the uh, the cryptids that we're going to talk about more tonight. Uh, and uh, we're going to first look at some of their possible origins of these things, Chris. And for that, we need to go way, way, way back in history. We need to go back to almost the beginning of the world. Uh, and, we, and, and, all, and lay a lot of this stuff on the doorstep of the Nephilim. Now, for those out there who don't know or or understand what the Nephilim is, uh, let me give you a quick rundown on that. The Nephilim are the offspring of angelic beings mating with human women. Now, in the book of Genesis, is a very interesting uh, description of that. It says uh, that there were giants in the earth those days, and afterwards, when the, the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and the same had children by them, Became, which became men of old, men of renown. Now that word renown in the Greek actually means uh, abnormal or above the normal, or what we now call the paranormal. Um, that's what that description says. So evidently their offspring were the result of a, these fallen angelic beings messing around with the DNA of humankind. And whenever you mess around with DNA, you can create what we would call monsters from stuff like that. And a lot of people think that these cryptids, some of them, now I'm not saying all of them, but some of these cryptids have their origin there with the Nephilim, the beginning of the Nephilim. Now, there supposedly were a lot of these things may have been destroyed by the flood, but not all. And here's the interesting thing, Chris. Now, that was the purpose of the flood. Yeah, that was the purpose of the flood. But that's the, here's the interesting thing. When you screw around with the DNA, the flood will not have wiped out the DNA. That is correct. The DNA was still there. And, the, and that possibility for the DNA and for time, as time goes on, to have these mutations, to have these uh, abnormal abnormalities show up, that is, the, that is unfortunately our uh, legacy of the Nephilim. You know, that's what's still ongoing to this day, that a lot of this stuff happened that way. And that some of these creatures had their origin there. Now, we're not saying they're all coming from that present day. But that is where their origins may lie, in this, this, this disruption of human DNA. 
Uh, one of the first, my favorite picks on that would definitely be the Sasquatch, Bigfoot, whatever name you want to call him, Yahweh, Yeti, wherever he's at. He is found worldwide, and there's got to be a reason for that. It's not just in one particular area. A lot of people think, oh, Bigfoot's in the Northwest, and that's it. Uh-uh. He is everywhere in this world. He has the, his many names. He's called the Aaron, the, uh, the Yahweh I mentioned earlier. Um, even every North American and Indian tribe had a name for him, a different name, which is where we get that name, Sasquatch. Uh, big brother of the forest sort of thing. So you have to wonder about what is the origin of, of, of Bigfoot, you know? Where did he start and what was his beginning? Along with some of these other cryptids that we know well. And and I'm going to say this about Bigfoot starting out. I don't deem him as a sort of demonic critter or creature. I don't look upon him in that demonic sort of way, although it may be his origin. He doesn't seem to have that nature. You know, uh, he seems more of a uh, outdoors kind of guy. He does more like a nature guy. Um, but you know, a lot of uh, of stuff goes back to these uh, to these nature uh, individuals, like the green man and the wild man. You know, the wild man is talked about in many cultures, and he is possibly uh, just another version, another name for Bigfoot. Uh, although there are a couple or two or three different types of wild men, we won't get into that tonight. But some people think there may actually be pockets of Neanderthals still existing in our world. Well, uh, they said the may... other day that there is yeah. a hominoid ape that's human-like that still may be existent as part of the world. They announced that the other day. Oh, yeah. And, you know, evolution now says that man did not come from apes. Uh, it now says that apes and man had a common ancestor. You know, if you want to get into the evolutionary part of it. But... Uh, that's just the theory. So what we're, uh, what we're talking about may not be the missing link. That's what a lot of people think the Sasquatch is, the missing link, the connection between man and ape or the, the families of man and ape. Um, to me, he, seems, he kind of stands alone. I just don't think he's got that kind of a connection to us in that way. Uh, the way his description is, although he is a, he is bipedal, you know he he walks like a man. He has muscles. He has the shape of a man. You know, uh, there's a big difference. So do gorillas. So do silverbacks. Uh, but they're not people. They're apes. Was a different thing altogether. Although they're very close, closely related biologically speaking. So what do you think, Chris? Do you think that? Uh, that he's a missing link, or do you think that he is possibly, you know, just a uh, another version of mankind out there, or what? Or a no. Neanderthal, or what? So we had this discussion last show. I have mm -hmm. no idea what Sasquatch is. Now, here is my saying. I do not know what just popped up on my computer screen. That was strange. Mm -hmm. I got my incense burning. It went out twice. If you saw me lighting it, that's what that is. It's a it's a cleansing incense uh, we use for uh, uh, spiritual. But anyways, um, we talked about this last show. I don't. I do not know. I know this. I have seen a video where allegedly it does cloak like predator. Uh, Crazy witch, Chris, uh, seen it. Uh, from a reliable source. Uh, we know that it's very intelligent, that it can open up jars. Uh, it can turn on or off audio digital recorders, not drain the batteries, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Joanne. Uh -huh. It can actually turn digital recorders off, not drain the batteries. So there is a high level intelligence. So I do not know what they are. They are here for a reason. Hello, words from the father with Jim Blanton. Hello. So I don't know. Well, let me uh, let me say this, Chris, about Sasquatch. Okay, he is a spiritual type creature. He does. He definitely has a spiritual side to him. Okay, like we do. 
you know, he definitely has that. And here's the here's the deciding factor on that. Wherever you have a spirit, a soul kind of a thing going on here, a living soul thing, you have a possibility of the demonic because that's what they work off of. You know, that's what they look for. That's their ground that they they try to take over. And uh, so he could have the same spiritual problems that we have as human beings. If he has a soul, if he has a spiritual side to him, which I think he does, because there have been so many reports of people actually having mental contact with Sasquatch, you know, that actually true, right? being, yeah, actually, actually thinking thoughts together, tele telepathy, you know, kind of thing, uh, that connection. And that is what the demonic seeks with humans and, and animals, too, for that matter, that connection. They have to have that connection, and it's a spiritual connection. Okay, it's not a it's not a physical thing, you know. So that makes me, you know, worry about Sasquatch and some of the things you hear about it. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna make this statement right quick. Anything I don't care what it is, anything, most anything that has red eyes, that has red eye shine, is definitely demonic in its nature, okay, whatever that may be. But they, that's, but it's not just stuck on the red. It can be white eyes. It can be definitely black eyes. I mean, totally black. There can be that eye shine can give them away. But if it's red, it's definitely, you can categorically say that's demonic for sure, 100%. But we do know that the demonic can possess them. Yeah, look at the true. pigs, look at the swine, the herd of swine in the Bible, you know. Um, they can do that. We've heard so many stories and part of the cryptid stories of the black dogs, black shuck, the phantom dogs that people talk about. And yes. we do know that there is a direct link of black magic with the phantom big black cats, the phantom cats that people see. Uh, there is a link with that as well. So when you get into the cryptids, it's very important that you not forget that demonic factor. Because I think they're inherently trying to get a grasp inside the cryptid world, just like inside the human world. They're definitely interested in that, without a doubt. So, you know, you can't, you can't put that aside when it comes to cryptids. Let me define cryptids again a little bit more for you. Well, the werewolf is not the werewolf is not a cryptid. Okay, a lot of people think it is, but it's not. That's not an unknown animal. <laughs> the werewolf is rather well, well known. Okay, thanks to Hollywood, especially. But he is a creature brought about by what? Black magic or curse, right. which is still which is still black magic. Okay, like uh, a skinwalker. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and skinwalkers are along the same lines of shapeshifters, and we're talking right. about shapeshifters here. Anything that can shape shift can definitely be tied, and here's another aspect can be tied to the demonic, because the premier shapeshifters of the universe are the demonic. They can do it much better and stronger than anybody else does, okay? That's part of their repertoire. They use it constantly. I have seen these these things take different shapes. I've seen them look like children. I've seen them look like animals. They can do amazing stuff with the shape-shifting thing, okay? So whenever you get into shape-shifting, there's that other part of that demonic factor there that you can't you can't disregard. So we're, when you're looking at cryptids, forget about the werewolves, because he's not basically really a cryptid. And really, the skinwalker is not a cryptid. No. Real cryptids are like Sasquatch, maybe Chupacabra. Dogman would probably fall into that. I'm not too sure. You know, Dogman has been described as rather demonic at times. And some have been described having red eyes. Some have actually been, uh, you know, described as having some kind of occult supernatural powers to them sometimes and the way they operate. So 
But like I said, with any creature that walks this earth that is a living soul, and I'm not talking about a human soul. That's a different thing. We'll define that later. But a living soul is actually a creature that can have a personality, that can actually show love, that can have feelings of cold and hot and starvation and all that. That's a living soul, okay, which is different from a rock or, a, or you know, a, something like that. It's mineral kind of a thing. It, has, it doesn't have a soul. It's not a living soul. Right, okay? right. So anything that has a living soul can be brought under the control by demonic forces. I'm going to make that statement clear. Let me say that again. Anything with a living soul can come under control of demonic forces. That's anything. That includes your cryptids, okay? Sorry to say it, but it does. Because they are living souls. And you know, you've got cryptids all over the world of many different kinds. There are thousands of them. I was reading today about one of my favorite. It's a Slavic legend. It's called the uh, uh, Dravig, uh, the Screamer. And it's supposed to come back from the uh, from dead, unbaptized babies and all that. So it's a very interesting legend. And, it, and that's in the Slavic regions. But also in Scandinavia, the same thing is called, I think it's called a Myling. Uh, so you, these things are connected to the demonic in some ways because this is an unbaptized baby supposedly haunting this area. And they really don't come out and attack people that much. They just scare the living daylights out of you. There's some screamers, but they haunt places, and you wouldn't want one hanging around your house, of course. So that's another interesting thing, but that's a cryptid. But yet... It's not an unknown animal. So when you get into unknown animals, let's make that very clear. Cryptozoology states an unknown animal is something like uh, like the Thyssen, the Tasmanian tiger. We know that he existed. We think he has gone extinct. So if you rediscover him, you would actually be dealing with a cryptid, okay, in that respect. So they are animals that are undiscovered or rediscovered or unknown animals, per se. That's the umbrella term on all that. But I'm stating for the fact tonight that some of these creatures, and I know Bigfoot exists because I've seen him. I've had my own experience. I've met him very briefly, but it was it was a meeting. I'd love to spend a little more time with him, but anyway. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the whole thing is, I know he exists. It's, that that's decided for me because I don't hallucinate. I don't take drugs. I'm not insane. Okay, I I know what what I saw and I saw what I saw, and I had that experience. But I know he's he exists. But I think there's that side of him, just like you said earlier. These people he can drain batteries, and we know the demonic can do that. He can mess around with technology. We know the demonic can do that. So you've got a lot of factors that point to their possible existence in the cryptid world. And that's the connection that's going on there. And I think it all directly leads back onto the doorstep of the Nephilim. Because it had to begin somewhere, and I think that's his actual beginning, fallen angels. And when you talk about demons, you are talking about fallen angels. Definitely. I agree with that. I don't see why not. But anything that lives has that capacity to be overtaken by these demonic forces. And uh, we must understand that. And, and, and if you believe in the demonic, you believe that it exists, you believe in God and the angels and all that, you've got to believe that factor as well because it's a possibility, a very strong possibility of things that you run into. Look at all these devil dog stories, these hell hounds, you know. Now, I want to tell you something about a hell hound, okay, because this lumped in with a cryptid sometimes, but it's not a cryptid per se. It's, it kind of falls in line with the skinwalkers and stuff. It's it's not a cryptid, okay. Um, but the hell hound is supposedly sent. It's a demonic dog, but really it's just a demon in the form of a dog. But most of the time, 
of the time, a hellhound could not be seen with a human eye. You hear it. You can feel its effects. It can kill you, supposedly. can kill you or maim you. But you can't see it. It's most of the time invisible. Because it is what? Demonic. You know, the demonic spends a lot of its time being invisible. Let me give you a quick antidote on that. I don't know if you've ever heard of a minister called, um, let's see, his name is uh, Lester Sumrall. You ever heard of him? Yes. I learned a lot from Lester. Lester was a genius at this stuff. Lester was quite a man. And he had a case one time with a young lady, a young girl. She was, I think, about 12 years old. And this this demon inhabited this girl. Somehow or another, it got in this girl. And it would turn this girl invisible. Can you believe that? This, this demon would actually turn this girl invisible. And he went there to where this, they took him to this, because, uh, you know, he was very good at getting, casting out demons and getting rid of demons and facing down the demonic. And they took him to where this was going on. And, um, and when they got him there, they said, this is where the little girl lives. So he went in, and he saw the little girl sitting in the chair in the corner. And he talked to the mother and father. So what's going on here? Where's, you know, uh, what's going on with your daughter? And they said, well, our daughter's not here. And he said, what do you mean? And so he described the girl sitting in the chair. There. And she said, well, that's our daughter, but she's not here. And she said, she's sitting right there. And the man that brought him there, he couldn't see the little girl. Only Lester could see the little girl. Because he had faced down demons before. He had power over demons through Christ, of course. He had power over these things. And the, and the demon couldn't pull the wool over Lester's eyes. Okay. Like I say, I learned a lot from that man. He was very good at this stuff. They even, uh, he cast out so many demons in certain parts of the, the world. They even had a price on his head to get rid of him because demonic forces definitely did not want Lester Summer all around. <laughs> so if you could ever get a hold of any of his books, I would suggest you would like you to, to, to bend your research that way because he was a fascinating man. He knew his stuff, definitely. But anyway, when he cast the demon out, all of a sudden everybody could see the little girl. Well, she was, and that's what Lester told him. He said, uh, "You got to, you got to understand that you were being fooled by this demon. She was here all the time. She never left. But that's not what the demon wanted you to see. So you, you get the key to that, Chris." Yeah, it's what the demonic wants you to see sometimes, and that's what you got to be very, very careful about. Like I said earlier, they are premier shapeshifters. If a demonic wanted to look like Sasquatch, he could definitely do it. Let me give you an illustration on this. You remember Slender Man, right? I think there's a right. little girl that was murder murdered because of Slender Man. Um, Slender Man was made up on creepy pasta. So was the rake, by the way. Both of these creatures, these so-called so paranormal creatures, were actually figments of imagination. They were made up on this creepy pasta site as a story, to use in stories, and they even had fake photographs of them and all this stuff. Uh, but it was 100% it was, it was fake. But let me tell you this. I'm going to make an interesting statement to you. They are no longer fake. Because the demonic has taken that imagery because it's so negative, so scary and fearsome. They have taken that image and now they use it. So you might as well say the rake and slender man now really exist. I know they do. I've got eyewitnesses that tells me so. But the interesting thing is look at the origin of them. They, they took these ideas from people. That imagery, and I have actually had this happen to me personally, where the demonic has actually taken the images out of my subconscious to use against me. They can do it. I know that sounds far out there and weird, but it's true. They can do it. I don't think they can read your innermost thoughts. No, I'm not saying that. But I think whatever, let's say whatever your mind you know, when you get in a certain predicament or a certain situation, 
Your thoughts uncontrollably bubble to the surface sometimes. You know what I'm saying? They kind of, thoughts kind of bubble up. It's like what Job said in the Bible, which is the theosis of anti-faith. What I greatly feared has come upon me. Well, the demonic knows how to use the weapon of fear, and they know how to use it very well. And they can take these subconscious enemies, these things you're strongly thinking about, or strongly feeling, and like I say, they're super, super, super sensitive. They can pick up on things you would not believe, you know. They can use that. They will use that. They will utilize that as a weapon against you. Trust me, this is true. Very true. And you have to be on guard against that. And that's why I say the number one thing to face the demonic with is faith. Faith does what, Chris? Faith casts out what? Uh, All fear. That's right. Faith is the enemy of fear, but fear is the enemy of faith. And the demonic knows that. See? So that's the weapons, the spiritual weapons you're fighting with here. Okay? For and against. That's what you got to deal with. And the demonic does not draw the line anywhere. Everything's all on the table with them. They don't care what they do to accomplish whatever it is they want to do. They'll use anything, any imagery, any emotion, anybody, anything, any animal. They will use anything to accomplish what it is their, their goal is. And that's what you've got to understand. When you face the demonic, you must always expect the unexpected. But to understand these forces, you need to bend your research back to the beginning, to the origin of where this all started, the war in heaven that ended up here on this earth. You know, that's what we're going to talk about now in the next episode. A lot of that, but I'm not going to get into it tonight. But we're going to go. We're going to go in that direction a little bit more in the next episode. But tonight we're talking cryptid. Okay, so I'm going to tell this to all the cryptid hunters out there. Okay, I'm not saying that Sasquatch is downright demonically evil, and he's going to try to take over your soul. I'm not saying that. But when you investigate cryptids, bear in mind you may run in to the evil of the demonic because it's definitely a chance of it being there without a doubt remember the story of slender man and the rake the rake is considered a cryptid by the way by some people but he did not exist until a few years ago think about that i think the chupacabra now listen to this the chupacabra the sightings of chupacabra they say there may be a direct connection with the Catholic Church, because the Chupacabra only shows up in predominantly Catholic regions. Think about that a minute. He's trying to prey upon the fears of people of that faith for some reason. There you go. That sounds what? Demonic, did it not? Yeah. And look at the description of the of the of the uh, of the chupacabra. Now I'm talking about the one that looks more like a lizard or a little dinosaur or something like that. Does that not sound downright demonic? Uh, and it go, and here's another factor: wherever you have the demonic, Chris, you will have blood, 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 blood. Blood is like an aphrodisiac to the demonic. You know, the Bible distinctly says very boldly, "The blood is the life." And if you're going to corrupt life, you're going to deal with the blood, okay? And blood of a sacrifice. And that's what demons love, blood sacrifices, by the way. Really sets them on fire. Because that's where their, their dark, evil, spiritual energy gets its mojo from, kind of a thing. You know what I'm saying? So wherever you deal with a demonic, you run into that factor of the blood. And I think that's why... We have to look at the DNA thing, too, as well. There may be some unknown factors in the DNA that definitely have their origin in the Nephilim. I would love to get a sample of some of the DNA of these cryptids and see what really is there. It would be interesting to find out, wouldn't it? Well, uh, unfortunately, the government does have it. Uh, we know that. Uh we have it. We, it says it comes back from Sasquatch, 98% human, 2% unknown. So and we, and we, do, 
and we do know the government is is uh, knows that the demonic exists without a doubt. I think they're they're kind of in a partnership with them to that extent. I, I hate to say that, but I believe that they have gone in business with a demonic big time, and the, and I believe in this cooperative cooperation from hell that the demonic is the big silent partner behind it all you know you, in every corporation you've got a bigger partner than other ones you know i believe that's the demonic in this in this relationship and i think our government has sold it out and unfortunately when they've sold themselves out they'll definitely sell us out with them without a doubt because that's the way that works but I know, I know, with I, I agree with you one hundred percent. The government knows Sasquatch exists. They know probably that Dogman may exist. Let's look at Dogman a minute, okay? This is something I can see Sasquatch naturally occurring in nature to a certain extent. You know what I'm saying? I can see that. I just, I just can't see that with Dogman because he is so unnatural. This combination of a man-like thing and a, and a dog or a wolf. Whatever the case may be, there's that that the weird connection with that. I mean, what do you think about that? Well, people are seeing it. People call it evil. People call it demonic. Uh, I never seen Dog Man. I hopefully never come across Dog Man. I haven't either. So there has been alleged counters of humans being attacked by alleged Dog Man incidents. And uh, public figures or public safety has covered it up, allegedly. So uh, I don't know. I have actually, I have actually been on Bigfoot hunts that had government interference. Chris, uh, we're talking about SUVs, drones, government agents, the whole works. I've had black helicopters. I've actually encountered that during Bigfoot expeditions. So, I mean, this is not that far-fetched for people listening out there. The government has a hand in a lot of it. I won't tell you what. We've got to understand this about the government and the governments of the world, not just our own. Their number one resource is whatever. Now, listen to what I'm about to say. Their number one resource is whatever they can what? Weaponize. That's the way that about why. Because their muscle is military. That's their muscle, okay? You can't do things without the military in this world. That's just the way that goes. That's your muscle when you're a government. So you would want to weaponize things like this to what? Strengthen your muscle to make your military better. That's why, and we'll talk about it on another show sometime, about this super soldier program that went on. We know for a fact that it probably is still definitely in existence from the days of Adolf Hitler. So, the government weaponizes the thing. Would not Sasquatch or Dogman, something like that, be a perfect weapon? Uh, we know they weaponize dolphins and whales. Why would yes, they stop they there? Why would they stop there? Nah. That would be perfect. Wouldn't you like to have an army of Sasquatch? Boy, you talking about some real muscle then. And, you know, uh, think about this. From the days of the Roman army before then, and the armies of Greece, what was the number one thing the companions they had on the battlefield? They turned loose the dogs of war. They had dogs of war. They would chew up people. They had battalions of dogs that would send out. What if you had dog in to replace those with? You know, dogs are still weapons of war. Yeah, I have uh, since I've you know been law enforcement. I know without doubt canines are are a real important part of police work. You know, absolutely. But what if the government could actually capture something like the dog man, or is he maybe something that got released accidentally by the government? Uh, was it some kind of weird experiment? You know. Or what? I could see them wanting to get a hold of a Sasquatch, but maybe they actually made a lot of these modern day sightings. Now, I'm not going back way back in history here. I'm talking about some of these modern day sightings, maybe attributed 
to and an accidental experiment they got out. That's, See, that's the problem. We don't know. That's that's the problem. So there's a lot of supposition here. A lot of questions but no answers. But we do know without a doubt that these governments of the world are probably in league with demonic forces. The demonic, Chris, is in everything. We've got to understand that. They've been with us from the beginning. They will be with us until the end. And in between that, they're going to cause a whole lot of problems. I think they already have been. Uh -huh. That's definitely what we're going to get into next week. We're going to get into some of that deeper stuff and why some people are making a religion out of the belief in aliens and stuff like that. But we'll talk about that next week. So, you know, people listening may want to tune in for that one because it's going to really be a very interesting time. But let me get back to cryptids for a moment. Uh, I can see probably some cryptids that really, which are not cryptids, like the Skinwalker, the Wendigo, all these being supernatural, spiritual type creatures, especially the the the, the Skinwalker and the Werewolf, uh, and of course in different parts of the world you've got were tigers, were apes, and you've got the different types of were animals. Were simply meaning shape shifting. Um, when you talk about the demonic, you got to talk about shape shifting. Like I said earlier, they're very they're experts at that, and they can they shape shift into whatever it is they want. So how do you know what you're dealing with sometimes, especially if you run up on a cryptid? This is a real thing, you know. So there's some telltale signs there. Like you said earlier, there's a uh, paranormal activity around them. Okay, that's a sure sign of something demonic. Um, go back to the movie The Exorcist. Uh, you might remember that scene when it first starts out, and it all supposedly began innocently enough as the real Exorcist story did with a, with a Ouija board. Things began to happen in the house, paranormal things, doors opening, weird sounds, weird smells, cold spots. It began very low-key like that, but that's the way it always starts. And wherever you have a possibility of this going on, and, and as it increases, you watch it increase, you're dealing most of the time with demonic forces. That's the way it works. So that's the number one sign of demonic forces. It's par paranormal activity. You know, paranormal activity. That's one sign. And then the adverse things to, uh, there has been many times I have read a lot of reports. Here's the interesting thing I want to talk about. I have read many times of reports of dog man, especially people start praying when they ran into dog man. They would start praying and, and, and rebuking these things. Guess what? What would he do? He disappear. Disappear. Mm -hmm. Well, that's another sign right there. That's a definite strong sign that what you're dealing with. It's not flesh and blood, per se. It is demonic. Because the demonic's not going to hang around for that, usually. And they, especially if you have a little bit of faith to back it up with. Uh, they're not going to fool with that. And I have had many reports of that. And even Sasquatch also. Not just Dogman, but even Sasquatch. And I'm not saying that is the original Sasquatch. It could be a demonic imagery thing going on here. You know, so that's one thing. You, that's the fact, you, and that's what I'm warning people tonight. When it comes, uh, my fellow cryptid people, I want to warn you: it's a possibility that that demonic factor may be involved, and you can't discount that because it can be dangerous to do so. Dangerous for you and for whoever might be with you, definitely. So, um, and here's another thing. And I've had I have a, had a good friend that went on a, a, a big a Bigfoot expedition, and they had a lot of freaky things happen that night. So a lot of the times, and I'm going to say, I'm going to roughly say seven or eight times out of ten, when you run into Bigfoot situations, you often have paranormal activity. Why? 
because you're dealing with something that may have a spiritual capability, capability to it. You are dealing with a creature that has a spiritual side to it. He may have supernatural problems. He may have some kind of manifestation problems going on, whatever the case may be. You've got to recognize that that is a factor that you can't forget about because you may run into it. But a lot of times, especially with Dog Man and some of the, and Chupacabra, some of these other these other cryptids, people talk about this paranormal activity going on. Okay, you've got a prayer cloth on. That would definitely upset any demonic entity you were to run into. Okay, which is so. Nice. Yeah, so that's what it's for too. By the way, I mean that's for protection as well. It's a blessing thing too, by the way. But um, actually, that would upset the demonic, definitely. They don't like religious objects. Why? It's not the object. It's not that cloth you've got on, Chris. It's the faith that utilizes that. It's the faith that you have for it. It connects to your faith. Therefore, it makes it a weapon against the demonic. You understand? That is correct. There you go. It makes it a weapon. And these things... Don't like those weapons. They're like uh, oil and water with them. They don't mix, definitely. And that's another sure sign that you're dealing with the money when these things, or or speaking the name of Christ, or or pleading the blood of Christ. They don't like that because it's an activation of what faith. That's the thing they don't like. That's their enemy. So that's another sure sign that what you're dealing with could be demonic. There are many signs. You get my book, Beyond the Shadows. I've got a list in there of a lot of many signs. And I've had a lot of people come to me and they say, oh, do that. I got this sign, this sign, or what sign. It's not just one or two signs. It's the overabundance of them that you better worry about. It's not maybe three or four that, you know, that you may be dealing with. It's an overabundance of it. I say when it gets to around 10 different signs you got going on there, you better look very closely at what you're dealing with. Of course, in the field, when it comes to cryptozoology, you may not have a lot of time to do that, you know. You can't consult a book and all that. But you may run into that situation. And let me tell you this, okay. If you will face to face with Dog Man, I'm going to tell you one thing. He definitely, you're not going to outrun him, probably, okay. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I don't think, I definitely know you wouldn't outrun Bigfoot, Okay. So it right. might be time for you. It might be time for you probably to stand your ground and act upon your faith. That might be the only thing that gets you out of that situation in one piece. Um, I think I, I have seen this happen a lot of times. And I have read, let me say this tonight. I have read thousands upon thousands of eyewitness reports and case histories on these meetings between these cryptids and human beings and one thing stands out a lot of times a lot of times these things will back off and walk away now i'm not saying that sasquatch is a real nice guy i don't know i haven't you know only briefly met him but he may not want to mess with you he may be kind of a peaceable guy you know if you're not bothering me i'm not going to bother you kind of a situation but it seems to be in a lot of these situations, these things unnaturally just walk away and leave these people in one piece. Why? Because there may be that faith factor that they've got already thinking. You know, I've actually had that happen. Well, I have run up against demonic forces and have rebuked them, Chris. Let me say this now. Listen to this. Without ever speaking a word, just with my mind. Why? Because even in your mind, you activate that faith factor. And they feel it. And maybe that's why a lot of people are walking around alive today, because when they ran into some of these demonic entities, that's why they got turned loose, because they activated that faith in their inside. You know what I'm saying? The faith comes from inside. It doesn't come from your shoulder. It doesn't come from your back. It comes from deep inside where your soul resides. And that kind of faith, and the Bible says, faith that works, that acts, is alive. It's not dead. And that's what gets things done, especially if you run into stuff like the cryptids. Look at those red eyes. 
looking back at you, you know that you're facing something that's probably very evil and would rend you limb from limb as it possibly could, definitely. But I think the power of the demonic often runs into a wall. It often runs into a hedge that it can't get past. And that, my friends, is the power of God. I think God has put fetters and chains on these things to a certain extent, or they would wipe us out in one day, okay? They have that power. They could wipe this world clean in one day of us if they were given that power, but they don't have that power. So remember, that power that's in you, that faith, is greater than whatever they have. A thousand times to one. You've got to remember that, and that's what backs them up. That's what makes them leave you alone. But you've got to activate that faith factor. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. Demonology today with Grizzly and Dennis Carroll talking about the dynamic and cryptic connection. Yes, Crazy Witch, Tracy Hall. Hello, Sean. Welcome. So hey, very Tracy. interesting. Very interesting. Uh, I mean, you, you put a real good spin on it. Uh, you know, a lot of people do not think this way. Uh, if you believe in good, you must believe in evil. If you believe in yin, you must believe in yang. I always say that from time to time. So, yeah. Uh, I do believe things that are alive, that have a conscious, does have a spirit. Uh, I watch enough horror movies. I do know for a fact that if things are alive and does have a conscious, uh, they can be taken over by evil. I've seen it in movies, not in person, thank gosh. So, yeah. But how come people don't want to believe in it? Talk about it. Well, the number one thing, I have actually seen people possessed by demons. I have seen them crawl around on the floor like snakes, their tongues like snakes. I've seen people cough up razor blades and nails that these things make people swallow. Uh, I'm not going to go so far as Hollywood to think your head doesn't go all the way around. Like in the movie The Exorcist, you would be dead if it did. And by the way, that is demonic murder. I don't know if I've ever told you about demonic murder. But there, it is very rare that the de demonic actually comes out. Like I say, I was talking about earlier about that age. They go over that hedge, that, 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 that net God's put there, you know, to keep these forces from destroying us completely, uh, physically. Uh, but demonic murder, which is very rare, they very rarely actually murder someone. They usually get somebody else to do it for them or get them to, to do their own selves that way. That's the way the demonic works. They're a bunch of cowards. They won't attack you face to face most of the time. Um. When you come face to face, my friend, with a demonic, then you are on some very shaky, shaky ground. You have to be very, very careful because they don't usually work that way. They're like sidewinder rattlers. You know, they come at you sideways. They don't know they're coming at you forward. They're, they're, they're the cowards like that. 
spiritual bullies, you might say. But uh, when they get in your face, it's a different matter altogether. It's like we used to say when I was a cop. You can stand there all day and let somebody cuss you for everything they are, say everything they want to about you, and there's nothing you can do about it. You can't, you know, words are not going to hurt you. But when you touch somebody, ah, oh, then the game is different. When you put hands on somebody, when you get physical, then everything changes, okay? Um, under the law, you have that right to protect yourself. And especially when you come to the demonic, you have that definite right to protect yourself because they not only can destroy the body, they can actually do some bad stuff to your soul. But when it comes to the physical, the demonic can actually murder people. Let me tell you this right quick. Whenever someone is found actually, like I can say, this is very, very rare, their head is completely always turned around to look over their back. That's the way they murder somebody. I have actually seen demons murder animals that way. You know, have left them that way with the head turned away. Uh, which one of the first things when I investigated cattle mutilation that I asked is the head turned all the way around. I wondered about that. No, it wasn't. Because that's the, one of the sure signs of demonic attribute there is that head turned completely really? around. And that's why. And that's why you see that in that movie, The Exorcist. William Peter Blatty, who I spoke to once about that, actually uh, you know, read, uh, he did his research. All good writers is in the research writers, okay? That's what it all comes down to, research, research. That's the number one thing. But he found that out about demonic murder. And I think he, uh, when he actually did The Third Exorcist, he directed it. And you see some of that in the third exorcist because that's demonic murder. But um, actually, in real life, you would never, ever see that happen unless they were killing that person. That head hey, doesn't go all the way around. You would survive that. You know, that's ridiculous. That's Hollywood, you know. But anyway, um, that's the demonic, and that's the way they do. That's the way they manifest themselves. Hey, here's the interesting thing, Chris. I'll tell you this about the demonic. Even demons have a set of rules. You ever think about that? Yes, I do. Even the, even the demonic has a set of rules. Although the everything is on board with them. And then, like I said earlier, they'll stop at nothing to do what they want to do. They do have certain criteria that go by. Here's one thing I've always said about evil. Evil, sooner or later, no matter how it misrepresents itself, trying to look good, will give itself away. That's one of the rules of demon demonology. They eventually will give themselves away. And that's why I say you look for these signs. You look for like the red eyes, the paranormal activity, the smell of sulfur. We're going to talk about that some next week with UFOs. You look for that. And that's the, t that's the sign markers, just like you have highway markers on the side of the road. That's the signs you need to pay attention to. Because that's showing you and warning you that what you're coming up against is not natural. It's not in the natural world. Let me tell you something about one of my favorite cryptids, and I've actually been in the field looking for these things. Uh, the phantom black cats, the big black cats. I'm not talking about house cats now. We're talking about them. And I've seen pictures. People have actually taken pictures of them. Well, they're not really a cryptid, per se, like I said about some other things, but they're lumped in with the cryptids, okay? But the Phantom Black Cats have a direct connection with black magic, witchcraft, and sorcery. Actually, most of the time, the witches, you're talking about skinwalkers, the European equivalent, the witches, and we're talking about dark, evil witches here that, that, that do these things, like the skinwalker, can actually turn themselves shape shift wise into large black cats and kill people. That was one of the things they done. And whenever you see a lot of reports of these large black cats, I'll tell this to cryptozoologists in the field, you might want to start checking on possible witchcraft connections. Have there been rituals done there? Is this a site where ritualistic stuff has gone on? You may find this. And here's another thing. Guardian demons, which are some of the bad guys, I mean the real bad guys, they're sort of the body, demon bodyguards of the demonic. They often take the form of black 
large black cats, uh, amongst other things. So they're shapeshifters. So that's what you run into with this. So whenever you run into the shapeshifters, you, that's another big factor for the demonic. See, I don't think people realize that. I don't think people think it's always Hollywood. You know, why do you think the Jehovah, the Navajo, the Indian Indians, and everybody believe in that? That's why you cannot even speak that. Shapeshifters or anything like that. Skinwalkers. Uh, oh, you get their attention. Yeah, you do. You really do. Yeah. That's why I say we're protecting ourselves tonight because we're talking about dark subjects. You remember that old saying, speak of the devil and what? He will appear. Whenever you talk about these things, you get their attention. Just like if I were talking about you, I say, hey, I know I was talking to Chris, Chris last night, you know, and I would get your attention. You say, what? What did what, what you say? Because I called your name, you know. I'll get your attention. So when you talk about these things, spiritually wise, supernaturally wise, you get their attention. That's why you have to be very careful. That's why in demonology, we rarely ever really go out on them and speak the names of these demons. Because to name them is to invoke them. What was the first thing Christ said to the demon act when he walked up to him? And he spoke to the demons in him. He said, demon, tell me your name. Name, yeah. Why? Because if you get their name, you have power over them. You know, your name, I'm going to tell you something, Chris. Your name is a mystical, supernatural thing. Why? Why did I just say that? That's weird, isn't it? But it's true. Your name is known to God. You are known to God by your name, too, okay? God said, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Your name, hopefully, is written from the foundations of the earth in the book of life. Your name is a mystical thing. Okay? So is the name of demons. That's their names. That's part of their what? Soul. That's part of their being is your name. And I've often looked at people that like to change change their names for no reason. I have to wonder about people like that. There's something inherently going bad in that situation to me. Because your name is your name. That becomes part of you. No matter how much you might not like it. <laughs> we not like our names sometimes. We didn't pick them. I think you're listen to this. I'm going to make a bold statement. Your name is tied directly and in part to your destiny. Absolutely. So when you get the name of an individual, you have a little bit of authority over that person. So it is with demons. Our name is Legion, for we are many. You know, a Roman Legion, I think, runs around, what, about 2,000, 3,000, something like that. That's a lot of demons. Plenty. Which is why they didn't actually come out with their individual names. He would have been there all day. But they knew Jesus. Oh, yeah. Just like they knew Peter and Paul when those two guys got, you know, beat up and thrown out of the house by the demons. You know, Peter we know, Paul we know, but who are you? They came in their own name, not in the name of God. And that's what Jesus was there. He was in the name of his father. He was there doing his business. And uh, they knew that. And so what do we have to do with you? Oh, son of David, our time has not yet come. They know their time is short. And that was 2,000 years ago. How much further along are we in this time? A long ways. Yeah. Well, that's true, Raven. That's the way the demonic works sometimes. I've seen them they take on many forms, do many different things like that. Uh, the one the most disturbing to me was that actually take on the form of children. Uh, I was talking about that passage in the Bible with Elijah. You remember he went to a village. God sent him to a village, and a group of children supposedly ran out and impeded him. They were keeping him from doing what he was doing. They were making fun of him. They were harassing him, calling him baldy and all this stuff. They called him names. 
And he said, God, help me. And God sent a bear out to get these. I don't even think they might have been real children. They probably were demons, actually, in the form of children. This bear came out and got rid of all of them. Uh, that was a very interesting incident. Uh, when you impede someone that's been sent by God, you're usually on the wrong side, okay? So remember that. And uh, if these things are uh, doing that, you know, mine had jet black fur, long tail, a curl like a man, a mountain lion, jumped off a rock and disappeared. That sounds very much like the phantom black cat, uh, definitely. And like I say, sometimes, I'm not saying every time, there's a possibility you could be running into a natural flesh and blood one, of course. But sometimes you got to take into that factor, you may be dealing with a, an evil witch, a dark witch here, you know? Because that's the form they often took. Um, there's a story in my family about uh, an uncle of mine who actually uh, ran into a black cat like that that may have possibly been tied directly to witchcraft to the witch that lived next door. So uh, there's Nighthawk. How you doing, Nighthawk? And, uh, you know, these ties are strong and they're demonic. These are not good things. Here's the bad thing, Chris, and we're going to talk about this more next week. But humans tend to put humanity on things that don't deserve it sometimes. You know, we try to make Bigfoot human when he's not really human. You know, we try to make Dog Man to more, be more human when he's not really human. But we tend to do that. You know, that's like we take our own dogs and put clothes on them and costumes on them. And we treat them like humans. And yet they're not human, you know. Uh, although some of them may deserve to be that because they're so close to you. But we tend to do that. But we have to be very careful because that could also be detrimental to us. We put human attributes on things that are far from really being human. And we tend to do that with a demonic sometimes, too, if we're not careful. I think a lot of it, people do that. Uh -huh. And it, it can be a trap. It can be a trap. It can lead you into different bad, dark roads, put it that way. Uh, you know, I think a lot of actual religions in this world, I'm not going to call any names on them, are actually founded that way. Some of these, I guarantee you without a doubt tonight, and I'll make this bold statement, some religions in this world come straight out of hell, okay? I have to say that, but they do. And we tend to overlook these things as humans um, because sometimes we're dealing with other humans, of course. But when you come to cryptids, you got to remember that what you're dealing with is not human. And it doesn't have a human attributes. They say it may have feelings and it may have emotions, but you got to remember they're on a different level than what you are. You're human. They're not. They're on another level, and you got to understand that. That's what you're dealing with. You know, whenever I went out looking for little Bigfoot or Dog Man or all that stuff. I was always very meticulous in the way I done. I did it. You know, I would go out in a certain way. I would look for things that were out of place. Uh, I would do mostly tracking to see, you know, if bushes were bent down, all this stuff. I won't go into that tonight. But I had a certain routine I always did because I understand that I wasn't looking for people. I was looking for something that's out of a different category, you know. And you got to start trying to think like that. You got to start trying to think like that. I said this to someone the other day. We have to, when we read accounts of these things from many, many years ago, I'll give you an example in a minute. You got to look through the eyes of the people that lived this, okay? Look at Elijah's going up into heaven. The guy that seen this happen said, oh, he took off in a fiery chariot. It probably wasn't a chariot. It could have been a spacecraft for all we know, okay? But he didn't have anything to equate, equate that with. He couldn't say it was a spacecraft because he'd never seen a spacecraft. But he had seen chariots. So that was the only thing he could use to describe what he was trying to right. get across. You know that is true. And you got, you got to look to those people's eyes. Just like when I read case histories 
and eyewitness reports of these things that have happened to people. Oh, I try to see through their eyes. As a writer, that's a valuable thing to have, by the way, to look through other people's eyes. It can be kind of emotionally tricky, too, sometimes, if you're the matter. The subject is very dark. Um, I have been in the minds of serial killers, and that's not a good place to be, okay? <laughs> uh, but if you can see through someone else's eyes, like that old saying, if you walk a mile in their moccasins, you understand these people. Uh, you see through their eyes how they saw it. You get a much, much, much better understanding. And if you understand what you're going after, if you're looking for whatever cryptid it is, you understand it, know more about it, what it might do and how it might act. That gives you a much, much better and broader understanding of what you're trying to accomplish. Well, it's our perspectives, uh, as you wish. It's our perspectives we've got to watch out for because we tend to go with our opinions and our beliefs when that might not necessarily be what we need to do with that situation. Like I have said many times about investigating, you can't go in predisposed. If I were to come to you tonight, Chris, and say, I need you to go in this room over here because there's some paranormal activity and I need for you to investigate it. I may know what supposedly happened in that room, but I'm not going to tell you, Chris, because I don't want to predispose you to believe something. I want you to find out for yourself with your openness, your mind, open-mindedness about it. I don't want you going in believing something that I might think is different. I don't want to change you my opinion. I don't want you to use your opinion. I want you to just go in and get, as uh, Sergeant Friday used to say, the facts, ma'am, you know? Just the facts. Uh, we have to be very careful with that. We put ourselves on certain objects. Just like, like you, I've seen pictures of Sasquatch, and he's got only uh, a, 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 a ribbon of flowers in his hair, and he's a nice guy. He's got birds in his hand, and he's walking through the forest. He's like the god of the forest, you know. He's protecting it. But how do we know that? I mean, that's us putting a human on him, putting our humanity on him. But he may not want that. I don't think he would. I don't believe he'd appreciate it. <laughs> uh, but that's the way we do, and we have to be careful about doing that. We can't let our own belief systems get in the way of my, the real truth of the matter. Uh, we're all human, and that's a fallacy of the human, of being human, and we have to guard against it. Yeah, Definitely. but we want to believe good in everything, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, you you know, you don't want to be. Uh, here's another thing. I'll say this. And I have been accused of having a critical eye on stuff. But you have to have a little bit of a critical eye. You can't believe everything. You know, I've seen people that believe everything. You can't believe everything. You really screw you up. OK, but you want everything. You want to have a good experience with everything. You don't want, you know, if you if you run into Bigfoot. You don't want him to come crashing through the trees out to get you and tear you around limb from limb kind of thing. You want a good experience with him, you know. And you want to believe maybe – I believe that Bigfoot is the kind of a being that says, if you don't bother me, I'm not going to bother you. I kind of feel he's that way. But that's my feeling. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but he, nine times out of ten, he kind of expresses that attitude. You know what I'm saying? And, and you've got to judge something by its actions. The fruit don't fall far from the tree, my friend. Well, that is true. Now, I have a question. Sure. What about the stories that allegedly states that we... The human race are working with the Nephilim underground to defeat God and his power. I think there's a lot of truth to it. Uh, if I were going to keep away from prying eyes, take a look at Area 51, by the way. It's wide open. You can get to certain mountains and look down on it. They have a problem with that, by the way. I think they would rather much like it, and we don't know how deep Area 51 really goes. 
how many levels down it may go. If you want to get out of the prying eyes of people, you definitely want to go underground. I don't, uh, I don't think I, anybody heard what I just said, and I repeat it. Okay. So the rumor is, ladies and gentlemen, that we, as humans, our government, along with others, are working with Nephilim to rid God and his power from earth. Yes, I said that. Okay. Well, I was going to say about the, the military underground, military bases. I believe a lot of that's going on there, Chris. And I believe that's where a lot of it's happening. And some of these weird experiments and stuff going on. And I believe... Here's the here's the thing about it. The Nephilim have wanted to screw with the DNA since day one. They wanted to really corrupt and screw up mankind from its very essence of its beginning. That's what they've been at, and they're still at it. They haven't given it up on it. Okay, they're not going to. And like I said earlier in the show, if there's certain forces in our government, certain auspices of our government are in bed with the demonic, they're definitely working with the Nephilim. The Nephilim are the demonic, my friend. That's who they are. That's who. That's their origin. Although they have a certain attribute of humanity to them, they're screwed up. You know, like I've often said, I make this statement and I'll say it again tonight. There are things out there walking around that are not human and never were human to begin with. But there are other things walking out there that look human, that once were human but no longer are human. That is the Nephilim, too. Okay, that's the influence of the Nephilim. And our government, the governments of the world, not just our government, have been infiltrated to a certain degree, controlled by the Nephilim in this world. The large corporations of this world are being controlled by the Nephilim. The Nephilim are forced to be reckoned with because their father, Satan, is the Lord and God of this world. That's what you're dealing with, okay? And don't think they have not contaminated every aspect of this world. That includes the cryptids. That includes everything else. And we're going to talk some more about that next week in part two. But that is definitely a factor that we must all recognize is actually going on in the world around us today. Yes, Chris, we did talk about CERN. Oh, yeah. The symbols, uh -huh. the God particle, the portals. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. The case of hell have been opened by these guys, okay? Go back to the book of Revelation, the bottom of the spit. The God of that, the God of those demons, Abalon, Apollyon, Abaddon. His name is the Destroyer. They are opening. I think they've just cracked the door open a little ways right now, okay? And I think that's why paranormal activity is increasing in this world. Look around you people, open your eyes and understand this. Paranormal activity is increasing for a reason. It just doesn't happen to be doing that. It's increasing more now than it has ever before done so. And look at the increase in Satanism in this world and dark witchcraft and all these other things going on. There's a reason why these gates are being opened by men controlled by the Nephilim. I said this earlier. God's put a hedge around these forces, but here's how sneaky they are, Chris. Okay? If they can't get around that hedge, they'll use mankind to do it. Yeah, but we're so blind. We believe what we see in the media. We we believe what we're being told. That's what they want us to believe. You see, it's like, you know, the Bible talks about in the end times, there will be something come over the world called a delusion. And I think we're beginning to see that today. The delusion in the world is created by the darkness. They're getting you to believe and see things that they want you to believe. 
They're, they're, they're brainwashing you day after day with this influence that's constantly pounding away at you. There's the imagery, the sounds, everything. Uh, it's like that guy, Chris, that ate at McDonald's for one year. Like, they killed him, okay? It was the influence of McDonald's that, like, they did him in, okay? Yeah, I uh, remember that. Food. Well, that's the same thing spiritually we got going on here. Look at the spiritual food we're putting in ourselves. Not just the physical food. That's bad enough. Okay, the water that we drink is contaminated by a lot of this stuff. Look at that. But that's not that's not even the worst part of all the spiritual food that we're we're partaking of. It's the evil. It's dark stuff. And it's constantly look at the movies, the songs, the entertainment, the things coming out of Hollywood and the newspapers and the news media constantly day after day. It's it is staining the very essence of our souls with darkness. But it sells. It makes money. Yeah, it's power. Power is money. And money is power. That's what, that's what the money is all about. And that's why the Bible says the love of money. The love. Not, not having money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Yeah, the Olympic Games. Yeah, I remember that. The sacrifice yeah, I remember they that, performed. Sean. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Uh -huh. That was pretty wild. What's going on? And they're not like we, we talked about a few shows back, Chris. They're not even trying to hide it anymore. No, they're Why? not. Why? Why? Because they know they can get away with it. Nobody's going to stop them. Nobody's going to come out and say anything about it. Nobody's going to stop and say certain about certain lifestyles that people won't leave. Oh, no, we can't say anything about that, you know. Why? We're being, we're being censored. We're being shut up when we should be speaking the truth. Yeah, the Grammys. Yeah, I remember that one. That was an interesting one. They came out the other day. I sent you that article, Chris, about the satanic meeting where they shredded the Bible and, and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, that was, big, big uh, you know, I always say, ladies and gentlemen, believe in what you believe, believe in your power, your higher belief, whatever, but taking a Bible, a biblical reference, whatever religion it is and shredding it, uh, don't think so. I wouldn't even touch it. I wouldn't even Here's attempt the thing. it. Here's the thing, Chris. I'll say this. If you want to believe in the devil, if you want to worship the devil, that's your prerogative. Go right ahead and do it. But don't attack my religion for it. You know? There you go. Don't, don't, don't attack my belief for it. If, don't be an enemy of my belief. If that's what you want, you know, that's like I've always said, uh, what we used to say about drunk drivers, okay? If you want to get drunk, sit out there in the backyard and drink yourself silly. But don't get in a car and threaten somebody else's life with that. That's not fair. That's not right. And I say the same thing about that, the satanic stuff. If you want to worship the devil, that's your choice. If you want to go to hell, that's your choice. But don't try to take me with you. Yeah, Sean, I remember. I I, I couldn't believe it when I, I Googled the logo for CERN. Yeah. The uh, swirling uh, sixes. Yes. But like I said, it also has a biblical symbol of the whirlwind. Yes. And and why did God warn the wicked? You will reap the whirlwind. In other words, everything you do is going to eventually come to nothing. So I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, you know, you can think what you will. You can think how you will. You can take what we say with the word of grain, word, salt, sand, whatever, grain of salt, grain of sand, however you want to say it. You know, we're just giving you information. You can digest it, eat it, throw, toss it over your shoulder. It's fine. You know, we're just disclosing information because I was shocked at some of the videos that I have been access to 
that allegedly claims that what humans are actually working with that's demonic. And what's that one church all the movie actors go to? I, I can never remember that church. Everybody's a member of in Hollywood. Where's my uh -huh. fact checker, Sean? Chris, what's the name of that church? Somebody's got to come out here and say it. Oh, Scientology. Yeah. yeah, Scientology. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. How many people come forward with that and saying it was a cult? So. Look who found it. Remember who found it, Scientology? Yeah. L. Ron Hubbard, a disciple of Aleister Crowley. The Golden yes. Dawn. You remember the Golden Dawn? We're going to do a show on that one night. That's going to freak you out. He was a 33rd degree Mason, by the way, too. <laughs> I have to talk about that. But, but Aleister Crowley uh, had a lot of disciples, unfortunately, and that's one of them. So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, here's the deal. Okay. I believe in higher powers. Yeah, I wear my prayer cloth. I have my crucifixes. You know, that doesn't mean anything without faith. Like he said earlier, that's just a symbol of my faith. That's just a tool. That's a weapon for me to use. I don't need them. What's that they old... Connect. There's a what? connection, Chris. That's why right. we like them. They connect us. They kind of focus that faith. That's the main thing. What is that movie you always talk about with the vampire? Tell them about that again. Oh, yeah. I love oh, it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that was, uh, that was uh, Friday night, the very first original Friday night. And uh, the vampire hunter was going up the stairs after the main vampire. And he was kind of a fake guy. I mean, he, he was an actor and everything, you know. But he jerks the cross out and holds it up. And he starts up to the vampire and he stops. Because the vampire is laughing at him. The vampire laughs at him and says, you've got to have faith to use that. You know. And later on in the movie, he confronts him again. And again, he pulls the cross out. And the vampire laughs at him again. But he quits laughing because he kept starts going up the stairs with that cross. So now, he's found his faith. And that's what it takes. That is correct, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, Tom Cruise, born in Louisville, Kentucky, went to Trinity High School. That is correct. Uh, uh, the man, the man. But, uh, here's, the, here's the thing that really bugs me about Hollywood, okay? And they're just part of the problem. But they're like, every one of them is stamped out of the same mold. They all say the same thing. They expound the same beliefs. They do the same things. It's like they've got one great big secret club. Maybe they do. Well, I, 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 said, I said in one of our last shows, I don't know if it was last one or the one before, ladies and gentlemen, if you do not know, they have schools for politicians. Yes, they do. If you're going to run for president or a senator or a house of representative, they actually have a school for you to send you to, to groom you, to teach you what to do and what to say and how to act. And look at all these big causes, Chris. They teach what? Political science. Yes. Uh -huh. we've got to be very careful in this world like I said that delusion that's coming upon us strong delusion we've got to be very careful let's, let's say a quick prayer to end this tonight uh, because we've been dealing with some really heavy darkness here uh, let's have a little quick prayer uh, Lord God Almighty our creator here I plead tonight hear us call out to you in your name and the name of your son we ask that you give us a sound mind. Give us some sound bodies, but give us a sound mind and give us sound souls. Souls that we feed with good things, with your word, with your goodness and your holiness. 
Give us the faith that we need to stand in these dark times against this strong delusion that's about to come upon the world. Give us the knowledge that we need. Give us the faith to use. Give us the strength to stand against the wiles and of our adversaries and our enemies. We ask this in your most holy name and by your will and the blood of Jesus. Amen. Very interesting. You know. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you something. You know, I'm not an easy person to persuade. There's a lot of things that I do and do not believe in. But when you hear stories, allegedly things that's going on, happening behind our backs, now in front of us, what's really weird is usually I play the music. There we go. During our prayer, it would not play. It refused to play. You know, it, it's just a lot of people don't want to talk about it. So, I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. It's up to you. Believe how you believe, what you want to believe in. So, practice what you want to practice. We're not here to tell you which direction to go. That's for sure. But think about things. Crazy Witch, Chris, Sean. Interesting. Dennis has been around for a while. Dennis knows his stuff. So, well, ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you for tonight's show, for coming. Stick around for next Sunday at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. It's going to get a little bit mm, deeper, I should say. Yeah, we probably hit a couple of nerves tonight, you know. But we're here to open minds. Possibilities. I mean, can you imagine finding out that your government is working with allegedly Nephilims? No, I'm not making this up. Maybe next week I'll share a video or something. Thanks, Chris. Be strong, always. But ladies and gentlemen, from Dennis and myself, we want to wish you all a happy, good evening. If you ever need anything, make sure an email. So that's one thing I didn't do tonight. That's awful. I didn't even put up our email tonight. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Demonology Today's Spiritual at gmail.com. We do monitor that email. Tess, Raven Creek, good night, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. We got a new show starting Thursday at 9.30. Yes. Yeah. Talking about rabbit holes. Interesting. What do you think, sir? You I think I'll get it. Uh, wait till the part two. It's coming yeah. out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you all have a good night. God bless. Take care. Coast to coast. And around the world. Keep looking at Godspeed. Take care. Bye-bye.